Only 23 years old and already at $35 million in sales, it only took him two years to reach this level. Where is he going next? Today we're talking to Alex Serrano. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, January 31st, 2023. I'm here today with Alex Serrano, Luxury Bazaar's number one salesperson and probably one of the youngest team members. Good morning, Alex. How are you? I'm amazing, honestly. Today's going great. It's going great? Yeah. yeah it's I'm another another good day at Luxury Bazaar. So we're here today to find out what it is that separates you from everybody else. Um, what is it that you've been able to do differently from others that are on the sales team? You're not clearly not the only one. Mm -hmm to achieve such success. $35 million in sales in the two years that you've been here, of which I would say probably six months weren't, wasn't even selling. Let's yeah. start, you know, tell me who you are, tell me where you come from, give me some, some of your history. Yeah, so I mean, I, uh, I guess just to start a little backstory on my, my life, I mean, uh, as you said, I'm 23 years old. I grew up in Northeast Philadelphia, which is pretty local to here. Um, went to, I grew up with a normal middle class family, didn't really have, you know, a crazy amount of nice stuff, didn't really have like anything, you know, not nice. So, I mean, yeah, the, the year that changed basically like everything in my life uh, was around junior or senior year of high school. Uh, things started to get a little rocky with my parents and uh, my brother also passed away. So there was just a lot of bad things going on in the household. Um, and well, my parents, where were you at this point? Like, what were you doing? You were obviously still in high school. Yeah. I mean, I was just a normal kid. Like I was enjoying life and I, I always had, uh, ideas and dreams and goals that I wanted to accomplish, but I never really knew how I would get to them. And I always thought that college would be like the starting point as every young kid does. Okay. Um, but for some reason it just, I knew that it wasn't for me, like going to college. I, I just wanted to get right into like working, right? What were you doing? Did you have a job at the time where you- Yeah, so sort of hustle? I, um, I mean, I was going through this whole thing with my mom specifically because, uh, you know, we ended up leaving the house and uh, for a good amount of time, like a little over a year, we were sleeping on couches basically uh, in my grandmother's two bedroom apartment in Northeast Philadelphia. and. Um, yeah, it was a struggle. It, we had no money, we had nothing, so I had to, you know, get out there and get to work. Um, which my first real, I guess, job that I started making a little bit of money was valet. From valet, I went to actually work. Um, like I, I was washing cars cool. at the exotic car dealership in our area. Oh, yeah, it's a nice I, one. I just wanted to be like close to there, right? I just wanted to be like in this car scene because I was always infatuated with like. Were you infatuated with cars. cars or with the luxury industry in general? Both. I mean, I, I love cars. I've always loved cars, but uh, I wanted to be in that luxury lifestyle, right? I wanted to be around these people that had nice things. So I was washing cars for a while. I ended up building my way up to becoming the head of media marketing for the company. It took about like two years to do that. But, uh, you know, while I was washing cars on my free time, I would be learning about marketing, learning, you know, how to use this, how to use that, what kind of tools that, you know, were out there for advertising and just trying to build something that I could use in the future. And Once you reach that position, I, I noticed you also purchased your first Rolex now. Yeah. Was yeah. that like your first money watch or was that still a, a flex that you couldn't <laughs> afford? No, I mean, it was more like a flex. I mean, it had a, it was a Datejust 36, had a diamond bezel aftermarket, two-tone. I, I just, I don't know. It was that big look that I needed. Were you able to afford it or was that a stretch? No, 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 no way I was able to afford that. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I mean, basically after I, got that position was was basically my dream job um i realized that the car industry sort of wasn't for me so now that i had some knowledge of marketing and had a resume to back it up i could go shopping for like something else which i ended up at a like a home remodeling company real estate thing company i don't know basically i went there to do their marketing it was a small company and i did marketing like social media advertising but i also was going door to door knocking for them as well because they were so it's understaffed. Grind, I mean, yeah, it was, that was like, I learned consider so going into real estate itself. No, no, Why no, not? I did. But I mean, like, it's just not for me. Like I, I didn't like really it's see. very similar to like, you know, again, the luxury, luxury watch, yeah. luxury car, you know, that whole luxury industry, real estate is right up there because you're but, selling high yeah. dollar. But you have to items. think like at the time I'm, so I'm living in a one bedroom apartment. I have <coughs> basically like curtains as doors, you know, uh, my mom, uh, save for a while to get this one bedroom apartment. So there was like a lot of struggle, right? Um, and I needed something that was 100% gonna guarantee me money because I couldn't take the risk. Yeah. I couldn't take, you know, 
uh, learning about real estate, taking all these months off, going to this, going to that, and then like maybe in six months I'll sell like one house and make a few thousand bucks. You know, I just couldn't, yeah. I couldn't do that sort of risk at the time. Now, is that, hold because on, of my I, don't, I don't mean situation. to cut you off, but like, don't yeah. you think that, you know, it's the same exact risk with watches? I mean, there are people that are in watch sales that might only sell a few a month. Like that's, that's all, that's how they yeah. survive. That's it. Well, I mean, I, I guess that goes into the next part of my story, which was uh, after this uh, home remodeling mm-hmm. thing, I COVID hit, everyone lost their jobs, including yeah. me. And um, after, uh, you know, quarantines and stuff like that sort of cleared, I was looking for a job again and I wanted to do social media work. So I found Luxury Bazaar. They had a listing up, yeah. amazing yeah. social media manager. We have your um, your email right here of me yeah. offering you a, a job with us. And this is this is horrible, man. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I remember where I was. I was sitting uh, on my bed. Yeah. I was really excited to work for Luxury Bazaar. This was like my last hope. Uh, because I applied so many different places and um, it's funny like I was tasked tasked with hiring a social media manager yeah. and I had a budget and although you know and again the email says you know to you like I couldn't afford to bring you on as a social media manager yeah. but I was like all right you know if I you, I still I thought you had the personality I thought you had the drive yeah the fact that you accepted this offer is obviously, you know, that was like the beginning of all this. Like, this is amazing. The fact that you yeah. took it, the fact that you proved yourself, you came in, you rocked yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, you I know. think like even the email that I sent you back after I got that email of you accepting me as a secondary person, yeah. um, I, I remember just being so grateful. I was like, there's like, here's an opportunity and I'm going to run with it no matter what. You know, whatever I had to do, like I was gonna do, no matter how much you offered me, you could have offered me ten thousand dollars a year, like I probably would have still accepted it, because I just wanted to be a part of something, right? And uh, this was that something that I needed. So when I came in, um, I, I did whatever I could to make the most of it. It's funny. So off topic here, you know, there's a constant conversation, and I know, like during a the challenge, there was a big, you know, talk about it, like we want killers, not kittens. Yeah. I'm not a believer in, in, in a lot of this stuff. Like, I don't believe that we need to hire somebody that has watch experience. Sure, it's great, but I'm a, I'm a bigger believer in personality. Like, if you have right. the drive, if you have the ambition, I don't care if you don't know nothing about whether it's social media or selling watches, building yeah. houses, you're gonna figure out how to get it done. You know, you're gonna 100%. learn, you're gonna, you're gonna excel just because of that drive. Yeah. Knowing, having an experience, you know, having some experience selling watches or knowing anything about watches doesn't mean that you're gonna have that same drive. Yeah. You know, you could be extremely knowledgeable and still lazy. Yeah. You can't be ambitious and, and motivated and not be able to learn something. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you have those two factors, you could learn anything you want. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm, I'm, again, I'm super happy that you obviously took the risk, joined us. Mm-hmm. The social media marketing stuff didn't work out. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't really all because of you. We just didn't have a proper structure for it. Right. Um, plus we threw you straight into customer service. Yeah, which, which I was, think was like honestly a blessing. Yeah. Like uh, being able to work like with customers and sales and everything very early on, like making it my own because I was really thrown into it. Right when I started here, there was only yes. one other person That's that was it. doing it, and I started on a Friday. She left on that Monday, and I remember coming in that Monday <laughs> having no clue what to do. Wait, wasn't wasn't the other guy fired the same day? The another guy was fired the same day. Yeah. But basically, I came in that Monday with no clue what to do, no yeah. clue what how to manage these accounts or anything like that. But I knew that I had to figure it out, and I knew that I would figure it out. I mean, so you came I, in at a pivotal, pivotal time in a company where I was trying to help the company convert from wholesale only to retail. Mm-hmm. And you can't have retail without customer service. Yeah. So I was like, all right, we're going to find a use for this kid somehow. And the customer service has actually proven to teach people enough to be able to sell better, to know the product line, to know yeah. how to speak to people. So that, that actually worked out really well, and, and you did a really good job in that. I remember that one episode where you're talking to, what was it, the guy from like Spain or, or yeah. uh, Portugal or something, and he was trying to buy a Timex. That was, yeah, <laughs> that, that was hard. I, I mean, I wouldn't be able to deal with those sort of yeah. people. Yeah, I dealt with a lot of situations like that. So after, I mean, once we, you got the job, a lot has happened, and you ended up standing next to a Lamborghini. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess just like over the past two and a half years, like things have ramped up, obviously, but I've learned a lot and I use motive like my whole motivation was always that I wanted to be better than I was the day before. Right. So every day I'm learning new things over the past two years, like it's been a complete 180 for my life. Right. Um, 
I, I want to hear about that. I want to hear what was the 180. Like what yeah. happened from the day you got the job or from the day you started selling yeah. watches to today where you are the top salesperson, you've done over $35 million in sales. Mm -hmm. What was it that set you apart or what was it that made you today? Because you could have been another salesperson, you could have done $10 million in sales in two years. That, that would have been fine. That would have been reasonable. You know, it's not yeah. horrible, but yeah. you've clearly excelled. I, I think me personally, I've always said that it, a lot of that came from the struggle that I had to deal with early, uh, early on in my life. Like, I, I'll never forget those nights that I would go to bed hungry. I'll never forget, uh, you know, seeing my mom struggle the way she struggled. It, it's just something that's ingrained in my head that I will never forget that feeling and I will never want to be back there again. So when I was able to get the opportunity to see the other side of that, uh, the, the other side, right? I got to see how Adrian would live, how Roman would live. That's what, that was my motivation. I was yeah. like, I want to be them. I want to be Adrian. Like, I want to be that guy. So I did whatever it took to replicate exactly how he was. I would talk how he was. I would dress how he does. I, everything that uh, yeah. I wanted to be, I just started replicating. I mean, that's, that's the path that many you know? people take. They, you know, they find an idol. They find somebody that they, they want to be like. And yeah. It's pretty simple, actually. Like, take anybody that you look up to that's successful, that's achieved something that you want to achieve. All you have to do is copy exactly what they're doing. Now, it might yeah. not be to the you know the point of like wearing the same socks as them, but the yeah. actual like the work ethic, the 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 methods, the processes yeah. that they put in place. If you do those, you're a lot more likely to succeed than yeah. if you don't. Yeah. I mean, basically, what I'm trying to say is, I, I got a taste of that lifestyle, and I knew that there was no going back. I was either gonna die or be successful. die trying die trying and you and 50 yeah uh, and i mean listen i i this is my life I, everything that i've built over the past two years everything that i've had over the past two years and it's all because of this opportunity that has been given to me and for me to for even one second not try my hardest or put everything that i have into this you know yeah it's it just wouldn't now, make any sense you know? Can you think of something specific that you do that maybe somebody else doesn't or somebody else should be doing that has led to you just, you know, <laughs> being better or doing more? It's, I mean, I live a pretty unhealthy lifestyle in terms of work-life balance. Like, okay, there, that's there, so there is no work-life balance. This is my life, and that's basically what I would say separates me that's from the anyone key. else. Then that, that is the key, to not have, I mean, you're young, yeah. you're building up a career, you're building up a, a, a nest egg, really, of... of savings yeah. and, and investments and, and you, you know, know funds. Yeah. So you actually don't need a work-life balance. I mean, the fact that the work-life ba balance doesn't exist to anybody under, I would say 35. I can't say I agree with you. Like, yeah. okay, so one person that I always used to listen to, right, when I was like on this little come up uh, was Gary Vaynerchuk. Mm -hmm. And one thing he always preached was like, yo, I ate shit. My, all my 20s, I ate shit. Like, I didn't go out, I didn't party, I didn't yeah. go crazy with things. I just focused on what mattered to me, which was my future, and, you know, whatever. Is building, that wrong? Building this. Is that wrong? No. Everyone has their own form of success, but my form of success was, uh, you know, securing a future that I was going to be comfortable in and my family was going to be comfortable in. So... But to do that, if you wanted that work life, like, let's say, for example... I want to secure my future, my family's future, but at the same time, I don't want to really want to work that much. I'm going to put in a couple hours a day. The rest of the time, I'm going to self-care. I'm just going to take care of myself. I'm going to work out. I'm going to eat right. I'm going I don't to get think massages. like that. I, I don't think like you that. Because you can't. Because I, I, because I can't. Exactly. I don't, I don't think like that because I can't because I don't ever want to go back to where I was. And I know that any steps back, like, you know, relaxation time, I just... For me, it's not, it's not even a thought, right? Which brings I just, me back I'm, to the point. Like, you cannot have a work-life balance if you want to succeed or build yeah. something when you're young. Yeah. It's got to be work, not life balance. It's yeah. got to be work until you can suddenly start, you know, like yeah. laying off the, the gas pedal a little bit and be like, sure. okay, you know, I could take it slightly easier because I've built this. You know, I've already put in the time and effort. Yeah. I mean, listen, like, the one thing I guess that... If to answer your question, the actual one thing that separates me from everything is just literally comes down to work ethic. That's if, it. if you want something, you're going to have to go after it at all costs. I don't go out to bars. You know, I'm not hanging out with my friends every weekend. I don't, uh, I don't have many stable relationships in my life. I've lost a lot of friends. And, you know, 
the times I felt most lonely were the times that I was growing the most. Um, you know, because the focus, I mean, you are so yeah. focused. I think that that actually might be, you know, the thing Now it's hard to explain to somebody. If somebody says, Hey Alex, how can I be like you? And you tell them you just have to focus. Yeah. It doesn't actually break down into a process, you know? Well, you know, okay. So what do I have to do to focus? Does that mean I wake up at 6 AM and I just sit there and think about what I want to do? No. Or, you know, do I just yeah. get up and grind? Now, clearly you have to break up yeah. what that means. Like for, you know. for me, I can't, I honestly, I wish I could break it into simpler terms, but the yeah. simplest thing I could say is literally just work. Like give, give everything up for what you want to do and who you want to be. I do believe that if you had an opportunity with anybody else, not just us, again, we're lucky to have you. Um, but if you had an opportunity with anybody else with that same mindset, the same focus, you would succeed, whether it's selling cars, selling houses, selling watches. Um, I do want to ask you a question that might, you know, uh, might be a little uncomfortable. Uh, it's not uncomfortable. Tons of people hate on you in the yeah. comments <laughs> yeah. on social. I, love it. I mean, we get so much hate. Now, you're not the only one. Obviously, everybody else gets hate. Yeah. Um, I think I actually just got the first comment on one of these episodes that wow. wasn't very pleasant. Um, how do you deal with that? Like, how, does that like does that affect you in any way? I mean, because I, I assume it has to a slightly, even a little bit. I deal with it naturally because my whole life, like I wasn't. So the, you, you got hate comments your entire life. I wasn't him, right? <laughs> I I wasn't him. I was I wasn't the popular guy. I was always like sort of the outcast in any friend groups that I was in, which I didn't really. I wasn't really a part of a friend group, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sort of used to the rejection, the hate, the. I'm, I'm sorry, used, bro. I'm, I'm used to all of it to the. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm 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 used to all of it to the point where it's it's never gonna affect how I live. Okay. It just isn't, uh, you know, I, I don't really care. I don't look at it. And if I do look at it to me, it's just funny because whatever, I'm living my life. I'm very happy. I mean, they do I, say that if nobody hates on you, you're not doing something right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you a personal question. What do you spend your money on right now? Yeah. Just what do you spend money on? I spend money on, uh, I guess mostly experiences going out to eat, uh, so food, okay. Okay, so basically, it's not experience. It's ba food. Basically, I spend I spend a lot of my money on like going out to eat. I, okay. I mean, I do have all investment accounts pretty much set up. They're, they're automated. So you've you've done the four hundred one k. You've done the stocks. You've done like that. My stuff. my whole salary goes to my four hundred one k. Okay. I have a separate investment account that money is taken out every month. Perfect. Um, I have other accounts like savings accounts that I put money into. Um, I'll buy a watch, park some money. Yeah. In how do you there. how do you treat yourself? How do I treat myself? Mostly just food, honestly. I like going out to eat. Like I like, I never, like I said, I never really had friends. Yeah, so I, the, know, the I know few you friends don't that travel, I, you know, personally. You don't just like, oh, I'm gonna go to France, you know. Yeah, no, I've never taken a vacation. Yeah. I've never seen tropical water. Like I would love to do that stuff. Any but for investments me, other than like, you know, market wise? Like have you purchased any real estate? Have you purchased any antique, no, you know, so, vintage, anything like that? No, um, pretty much like, I like having like cash, right? Like I, I, I like actually being able to see the numbers. You just lay them right. <laughs> but I, but I am, I'm working on buying a house okay. uh, after some things clear up with this whole market, mm -hmm. just because it is my first house. So, and I have to kind of plan around this idea of going to Miami as well. Another personal question. Again, you might not be, you know, comfortable answering it, so you can give me a range if you'd like. What would you estimate you bring in, you know, on a monthly basis? Fifteen to twenty-five thousand a month. Good. All right. Cool. So it ranges that much because just of course just based on sales. Just how it is based yeah. on sales. But on average, fifteen to twenty-five thousand a month. That's that's again for when I guess I'm not a really good you know person to compare because when I was your age, I, I did that too. But I was in a completely different hustle, and yeah. one day it just crashed. I mean, this industry doesn't really have that sort of crash. It might have slow periods. Might have you know. Yeah, Strong and period. I and I've noticed even during the slow periods, I'm still uh, you know keeping up with my average. So. It's, but it's based based off of the experience that I've like the the experience that I've gained over the past two years and the obviously the I guess clout that I've gained over the past past two years that I, it's sort of automated. Let me let me get into that the clout that you've been able to build. Mm -hmm. um, so your Instagram strategy is different than you know most people. You know Instagram and by Instagram I just mean social in general. Yeah. You network, you interact, you share, you promote other people now. Do you, big on that. is that planned? I just share what I like. Like it's, for me, it's, 
like I have two pages, right? Obviously, you know my personal page and then my my work yeah. page, which is like my baby. Uh, but I my work page is almost like an extension of my personal page on a much larger scale, and obviously it's more focused towards the business end of things. But I basically just share what I like. Like if someone sends me like a cool, you know, pair of socks or a hat or a hoodie or or something, like I'm more than happy to share it, even if they don't send me anything. Like yeah. I just wonder I'm, if it's like thought out like okay if i share this guy's thing it might lead to a networking opportunity yeah a i mean relationship, listen, of like, course it's always in the back yeah. of my head like uh you know I'll, I'll do whatever it takes just to get my name out there and uh you've done a really good job with it i mean yeah. the amount of accounts that have shot you know shout out shout you out that mm -hmm. just like reposted your stuff has really grown and obviously you know some of the stuff that we've done recently has been really cool yeah. um and you've been a part of that let me ask you, I guess, a, a goal question. Where where do you want to be? Let's say, you know what, 2024, what do you want to bring in on a monthly basis? If you want me to attach a number to it, I want to be making forty five dollars to $50,000 a year. Or not a year. A year, though. I, I want to be making forty five dollars to $50,000 like a month. Okay. Um, I mean, that's just like goals that I have in my head, but I'm not sticking to the numbers point of things. I'm sticking to more... I guess, uh, physical assets sort of thing. So I, real estate is just a massive thing for me. Like I really wanna have. What is your plan to actually accomplish that, to, to get that goal? What are you gonna do more of or differently to reach that? Like what can you do better? Is there anything that you think you're not doing more of or like you know, you're not doing to the full capacity that you can be? I think budgeting. I, I mean, okay. I, cause I'm still, you know, a 23 year old kid at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, who, Which is surprising who, that you're not like the, balling out. You don't have like, you know, crazy jewelry. Cra yeah. Like, because kids at your age and uh, people at your age, not kids anymore, really, at 23, you know, once you come into your, when I first made money, dude, I, I balled out. It was yeah. just, it was dumb. But then obviously I grew up, I learned how to manage my money. So it's actually yeah. really cool to see that you are not going nuts with the money. I've that, had my fun though. I mean, you've seen my stories before, you oh, know, yeah. I've, I've had that lifestyle. I've been in the clubs before. But I, I feel had, like it was like six months worth like of, of clubbing. And then you were like, all right, cool. I'm going to chill now. I think it was also the friend group that I surrounded myself with yeah, because yeah. around the same time is, was, uh, when I started making money, my friends also made their big money as well. So we did all that. Like we, we had our fun. And when I started to see my friends sort of fall back into a more mature mindset where it's like, okay, let's, let's chill. We had our fun and let's start planning and saving and building. Uh, that's when I started to kind of, you know, evolve into that mindset as well, which I've always had it, but obviously when you first make your money, you want to have fun. So I had my fun. So if now, anybody's listening right now and yeah. they, their goal is to become, you know, a watch salesperson, the number one watch salesperson, or just to make you know a bunch of money in this industry. What is the one word of advice that you can give them? I would say most of my success comes from persistence and uh, just following up, like always being in people's faces, never leaving people uh, left on red. You know, people want instant gratification yeah. and they want value. You know, if you can't provide that, then there's no place for you in this industry. Honestly, perfect. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's that's basically it. I like it. Guys, if you don't um, already follow Alex Serrano, check him out at, at no wait list. Um, his personal pages, if, I, if you don't mind, I'll give that out. It's also at Alex Serrano. Um, yeah. Appreciate that. <laughs> anytime. I hope you like this sort of content. We're going to continue doing this. If you did like it, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Make sure you comment. Let us know that we're doing a good job and let us know what else you want to see from us. We're going to do this every single day. Take care, guys. Have a good day. Peace.